Hi everyone, good morning. This is Sarita from Hasha Trainings and welcome back to our PEGA interview sessions. Today our topic is on integrations. So we are going to do integrations like three multiple videos. So please keep watch every video and subscribe to our Hasha Training channel. Hi Hasha. Hi. Good morning. Good morning. Today our session is on integrations. Let, let us start. Okay. What is simulation in connectors and data pages? Yeah, uh, in connectors and data pages, we have an option called simulate the source. And in connectors also, we have at the bottom of the connect soap rule, we have one option called simulations. See, simulations can be used whenever uh, we wanted to uh, get a test response. I mean, like generate a test response from our end itself. That is, when in case, if the actual service is down, that means, Actually, I am trying to configure a connector and I wanted to test it to see if the data is being uh, received or not. And based on the response data, I have some other manipulations to do and proceed to work on the things. In such case, if the service actual service is not yet been built completely or maybe the actual service is down. In such situation, I do not want to wait till the service gets completed service and the, for, the, for them to build the service and complete it, I don't want to wait. If I have a model res request and if I have a model response, I wanted to complete uh, consuming a service from my end and with the response data, model response data, I wanted to build the logic related to further manipulations. So in this type of situations, we can go for using simulations in the uh, connectors. When we go and choose the option of simulation, it is going to ask us, to call the simulation activity in the simulation activity we can call a data transform and assign the response properties and that we can uh, consider as a model response further manipulation logic can be written so this is how without waiting for the service provider uh, for the actual response or the service being up and all we can just get the model response generated from our end itself by using the concept of simulations okay move on to next question okay where do you configure the endpoint url of services we consume Okay, so whenever we are trying to consume any web service from PRPC, so the endpoint URLs of the service will generally configure in the DSS, that means a dynamic system settings. So the reason for configuring in the dynamic system settings is whenever we move our connector rules from one server to another server, that means development to integration, integration to QA and QA to live. So the URL that is present in the connector rule cannot be modified because the connector rule are, rules are rule instances. But the need is going to be like, after we move it to QA, the endpoint URL should get updated to QA URL of the service provider. And similarly, UAT, UAT URL, live, live URL of the service provider. This is not possible directly modifying the URL in the connector rule itself. For that reason, at the time of calling connector, we can pass a URL uh, by uh, assigning it to a parameter. So now, if I define the URL in DSS, and I can retrieve the date, uh, that particular URL from DSS by using get data system function and assign get data system settings function and assign that to a parameter. And that parameter I can mention at the time of calling connector. Now, after this uh, uh, development testing is completed, when it go to QA, in the QA while testing, we have to modify the DSS entry with the QA URL of the service provider. For that, we need to direct, we can directly open DSS and modify the URL. The reason being, DSS is a data instance or we can delegate and modify. So that's how in order to modify the endpoint URL from environment to environment, it will be easy when we go for DSS. That's why we are going to create a DSS and configure the endpoint URLs there and read it by using get data system settings function and pass it to the uh, connectors while calling the services. Next question. Okay. What are XML stream rule and parse rule? So in Pega, we have two different mapping rules called XML stream and parse XML rules. These two rules can be used in order to map the data from, I mean like XML stream rule if we use, it will map the data from clipboard into XML format, which means that it will convert the clipboard properties data into an XML data structure. Similarly, parse XML rule is going to do the reverse, which means it is going to parse the XML data structure and assign it to the clipboard properties. So in order to convert the data from uh, clipboard to XML, we use XML stream rule. In order to convert the data from XML into clipboard, we use parse XML rule. Thanks for watching this video. Please subscribe to our Hasha training channel. If you have any questions or doubts related to interviews or if you face any typical questions and interviews, please post it in comment box. We'll reach out to you.
थैंक यू